Greetings, Kindred. I am Voivode Maquette, and welcome back to Our World of Darkness and another episode of Metaplot Monday. And uh, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're not going to be t tackling a lore sheet or anything like that, because last lore sheet that I did uh, for Salvador Garcia, which was episode 58 of Metaplot Monday, uh, got an interesting comment, which was, the timeline of the Anarchs is confusing to me. The Free State has been around since the 40s, but the Bruja and the Gangrel didn't join until the 90s. Can you please make a real short video giving a brief Anarch TLDR? Uh, that was given to us by Steve Winkleberg, and yes, yes Steve, I can. Uh, and that is, um, there is a lot of confusing information. Yes, the the um the free state has been in california for quite some time um and the gangrel and the bruja yes did not join the anarchs officially until 2012 not the 90s um but i do want to point out that up until 2012 the anarchs were considered part of the camarilla um i understand that the anarch free states uh, seems to say that that's not true, um, but officially, since the Convention of Thorns, the Anarchs have just been told that they had to follow the concept of masquerade under the banner of the Camarilla, and then the rest is them policing themselves. Um, but in 2012, during the Convention of Prague, uh, there was an event caused by a Camarilla member that made it so that the Anarchs were to blame on a lot of that, and that is the death of Hardestat by the hands of Theo Bell. Um, the way that I see things happening here is when the conventions happen, when the big conclaves happen, the Justicars are reassigned if new ones take the place, then new ones take the place. The Archons are then reassigned. If old ones continue working, then old ones continue working, and that's fine. But one of the things that they have to do at the beginning of these conventions is all of the Archons walk up and they kneel and pledge fealty to their superiors, their Justicars who hired them, or their clan Justicars. And... Unfortunately, the Bruja Justicar was dead at that point. Um, there had been a lot of stuff going on considering the Second Inquisition. Uh, there was the attack on Vienna. There were the bombings in Paris, the bombings in Germany. There were, there were so many terrorist attacks happening that were kindred-oriented towards the Justicars. Um, that, unfortunately, the Bruja... Justicar had not survived. And when Theo Bell, a Bruja Archon, had to stand up, he had to stand up and pledge fealty to Hardestat. And those two already hate each other. First off, Hardestat was a... It was a he was a white supremacist, just to put it plainly. Um, he was also a vampire supremacist. Um, he has been portrayed many times even just dominating the hell out of his own child to keep him in the dark from the things that he had learned about the jihad in general but when Theobel stood up walked to Hardestet and Hardestet looks him in the eyes and says kneel boy that was the last straw and Theobel did kneel but when he came back up he brought a sawed off shotgun with him and put it right underneath Hardestet's chin and pulled the trigger. Now there are rumors that this might be some kind of ploy to have the Camarilla be able to control the Anarchs better, that they faked Hardestet's death and that Theobel is actually a plant. I don't see that as a thing. I do see this as hundreds of years of being treated like crap finally taking its toll. The Bruja were not very split on this. There are some Bruja, such as Kreitzius and a few in Chicago, who are still loyal to the Camarilla, loyal to their princes. But the majority of the Bruja at that point left the Camarilla. 
Now, if history says anything, that means that those Bruja who were still loyal to Camarilla in a lot of cities were most likely attacked by the other Camarilla members. Um, because that's what happened to the Gangrel in 1999 when they left the Camarilla. There were many cities where the Gangrel were just attacked outright, that blood hunts were called on the entire clan because their Justicar walked out. And uh, depending on what books you read or where you get your information, that has mixed information as well. I happen to uh, fall back to the uh, Vampire the Masquerade clan novels, uh, the Fall of Atlanta series, um, when it comes to a lot of the lore. Um, and where in the Camarilla books it states that uh, Xavier walked into the Justicar's meeting room and less than a minute later walked out and took his entire clan out of the Camarilla with him with no explanations. In the novels, it says that during the attack of the East Coast in 1999 by the Sabbat, where they were just ravaging the entire East Coast and taking Camarilla cities, collecting the heads of Camarilla princes, the, the Gangrel were called. A thing was called. And, and a thing is a, a meeting of Gangrel. Uh, very much like a conclave of Gangrel. Just Gangrel. And it was called by Tanner. Tanner is, if you've ever seen the Vampire the Masquerade Gangrel Clan book, first edition, that's Tanner on the cover of that book. The Gangrel that's squatted down wearing sunglasses is... That's Tanner. Now, Gangrel Clan book, second edition, that girl who's in the alleyway leaning over looking all feral, that's Ramona. That's Tanner's child. Uh, or Ramona Tanner Child, as she's known in Gangrel circles. She was in the middle of trying to rescue her friends from a monster living in a cave. A monster that she knew by the name of Toreador, which made all of the Gangrel that she called for help laugh at her. The Gangrel got all riled up and went, we're going to go kill a Toreador. And they rushed into that cave and not many of them walked out. In fact, the only ones in the book that I know that actually survived were Xavier, who got the whole Anakin Skywalker treatment, and Ramona who is, now hunt, who is now haunted by the litany of names of all of Clan Gangrel who died that night. When Xavier walked in to the Justicar's meeting room, he told them that they needed to rally their forces to attack an antediluvian that was in upstate New York. They laughed him off. They told him that antediluvians don't exist. And he said he knew what he saw, and he left, and he took his clan with him. Good amount of gangrel purging was done throughout the Camarilla cities at that point, but they were not attacking an Andaluvian. It, it, it's completely justified that he would think that with the strange amount of powers that he saw used to kill so many of his clansmen. But he quit. And he wandered off. And eventually he did end up dying. And eventually he did end up dying. We did lose Xavier. If you read the... The stories about Xavier and how he... Earth melded so deep that he met up with his own Andaluvian and, and the spirit of the Earth. and It's an amazing story. And it goes, it goes deeper. But the fact is... After the Gangrel left the Camarilla, they wandered as a free clan. An unattached, unaligned clan. Until 2012, when the Gangrel of the Anarchs were able to welcome in the rest as Clan Bruja also came in. I, I, do, I do like the way that the Bruja and the Gangrel have joined the Anarchs. I think it fits them more than the Camarilla. Um... But there is reason for all of it. Now, the free states were already established uh, due to Jeremy McNeil and um, Salvador Garcia 
um, taking over California. The Anarchs did exist. The Anarchs did have their own personal area where they rejected Camarilla ruling. Where they've been constantly fighting the Camarilla off left and right. Look at 2003 with the attack, the attacks from the Anarchs between them and Sebastian LaCroix and his crew that was uh, put forth in Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Uh, look at L.A. by Night, which I consider canon, and with Prince Vannevar Thomas coming in and claiming Praxis. This is stuff that the Anarchs have always fought against. They've always done this. But now that the Bruja and the Gangrel are directly involved in the Anarchs, but they're not the only clans that have come in and joined the Anarchs as a whole, because there were no fully Anarch clans until 2012. Anybody could be an Anarch. And the only thing stopping them from being considered anti-tribute by the Camarilla was the fact that until 2012, until the convention of Prague and Hardestat was murdered by Theobel, until then, the Anarchs were officially considered part of the Camarilla, regardless of whether or not they had a prince in L.A. or not. Because the Anarchs were not fully represented by just the kindred of L.A. Now, my game right now is running Anarch. We have been running Anarch for quite some time now. And the more I play it, the more that I think that I, I would most likely, if, if I was in the world of Vampire the Masquerade, I would probably be Camarilla. <laughs> Because I have not seen one instance that the Anarchs can actually work. And maybe with the help of the Bruja, the Gangrel, and the Ministry. Because the Ministry is that other clan that joined. Um, maybe they actually have a chance if they can realize that Anarchy itself, for Anarchy's sake, does not work. Um, at least in Vampire. Because with humans, you can go... There is a easy solution of making things stop. And it's a violent, horrible solution. But there is an easy solution of making things stop. With vampires, they all have superpowers. It's very, very difficult to get them to do things when you can manipulate the way that they do. These creatures are, are just that way. Steve, I don't know if you are new to Vampire the Masquerade or, or not. But this is, this is stuff that we dealt with 20 years ago is the fact that the Anarchs and the Camarilla were always at odds, but the Anarchs were also still welcome in the Camarilla. Because you were miscreant children that needed to learn your place. And most of the time when an, when an elder was in the Anarchs, they would eventually turn Camarilla because they thought they could change things from the inside. How they do that now is just... The fact that... <sighs> The fact that the Anarchs and the Camarilla are separate right now is because there's a bunch of neonates running the Camarilla. The, neon, the, the Camarilla is run by neonates and Encilli, and the elders who are keeping the peace. <laughs> Just, they're not here to do it any longer. And that's on both the Anarch and the Camarilla sides. Because they did have elders in the Anarchs. Patricia Bol Bolenbrook, or Tyler as she's known, was such a very interesting character. She is still said to be hiding, running around Europe at some point, after she was a primogen in Chicago, under Loden. She was also a member of the Anarch community in Chicago. She's also said to have influence in the Sabbat in Chicago. She's playing the fence on all sides really was but I think that you might need to look a little bit more into the history do some wiki diving the the unofficial white wolf wiki um, actually has a lot of very interesting information some of which being the fact that there are contradictions and I think one of my favorite points that they try to point out in the contradictions is the fact that they cannot decide when the Andaluvians of the La Sombra and the Zemitzi were actually attacked. Because some of them have them attacked way before Dark Ages even started. 
but the Dark Ages were not really something you wanted to take into consideration when it came to Anarch Revolt. And the Anarch Revolt is what spurred the Lysambra and Alluvian to be attacked. I'll just go ahead and I'll read the contradictions in the timeline right off the wiki for you guys because this is actually pretty interesting and it raises a lot of questions in my mind as well. There are a surprising number of contradictions concerning the timeline of the Anarch Revolt, even within the same editions. The Vampire of the Masquerade Encyclopedia Vampirica states that La Sombra was killed in 1205 and that the Anarch Revolt started in 1240. This cannot be correct, for all other accounts clearly state that La Sombra was destroyed after the uprising began, and Dark Ages Vampire begins in 12. 30, well after the year given for the attack on the Andaluvian. The Diablerie of La Sombra is more commonly stated to have occurred either in 1405 or 1483, though the former is almost certainly correct since the supposed Diablerie of Zamitsi occurred in 1413. Now, if you dig into the Zamitsi Andaluvian, you will find out that he, it has been destroyed a number of times, but also has come back every single time. Now, this last time that it was attacked in 1413, it was actually secreted away. This is a little bit of lore. Um, <laughs> secret, uh, secreted away by the Obertus Revenant family and taken to the New World. In 1413... It was taken and planted in a cave somewhere beneath where New York, uh, where Manhattan now is. Um, and that leads to a whole bunch of fun stuff later on if you ever read the Time of Judgment book, which has now been either pushed back or retconned. I don't know what V5 uh, actually plans on doing with that. Now... The inconsistencies may be the result of typos, deliberate attempts to obscure the history of vampires, or even some sort of widespread manipulation by an ancient La Sombra as seen in the Clan La Sombra trilogy. Archons and Templars, the book, uh, states that Tyler killed Hardestat in 1335, but by all accounts, this is before Tyler's Embrace which occurred during or after the Peasant Revolt in England, per Children of the Inquisition, another book, and specifically occurred in 1381 per both editions of Chicago by Night. All accounts agree that the Anarch Revolt ended with the Convention of Thorns in 1493. Now, that does not mean that the Anarchs went away. At that point, this, this goes into what I had said before, that the Anarchs are actually part of the Camarilla. The Anarchs themselves just had to pay back their stolen war gains. A few of them had to pay higher uh, costs for diablerie and, and other heinous crimes and stuff like that. But the, the Anarchs themselves were allowed to exist under the banner of the Camarilla, making them part of the Ivory Tower themselves. But they were like the lowest rung of the Ivory Tower. Now, stepping away from the vampire books, the mage, uh, the, the, the mage book, Mage, the Sorcerer's Crusade rulebook, and the Crusade lore book itself, uh, refers to a time of period called the Anarch War, or the Vampire Crusade, occurring from the foundation of the Camarilla in 1450 to the Convention of Thorns in 1493. Uh, presumably, this is uh, simply a reference to the Anarch Revolt as a whole, as seen through the mage's imperfect frame of reference for the conflict, though these terms could be named uh, for a specific period of the revolt after the formal uh, recognition of the Camarilla, but before the Convention of Thorns. It seems unlikely that such a definition uh, would only appear in the Mage source book rather than a Vampire source book. Now, for those of you who do not know, and this is actually something we're covering in my game Thicker Than Water at the moment, is that the Camarilla originally started as a seven kindred coterie. One member of each of the what were the founding pillar clans of the Camarilla 
being members, and they were not liked among the elders of vampiric society. And it's very highly suggested, um, because it's true, that that um, that Hardestat, who is the Ventru member of the original uh, co uh, the original Camarilla coterie, was actually killed by Patricia Bolenbrook or Tyler at some point before the Convention of Thorns even happened. Now, this is not a uh, misprint. This is not a retcon. This is not anything. Um, she did it. <laughs> now, I have a little bit of information here. Again, this is also from the unofficial White Wolf Wiki, and this this is actually a very good source. So, if you guys are trying to figure out um, stuff on how to run your games or just history to try to understand a little bit better, this is one of the best places that I've been able to find. Uh, it says that Patricia's first victim was the very Baron who destroyed her family, and she fled England soon afterwards. Now inspired by her sire, she eventually became one of the prime leaders of the Anarch cause. And around 200 years after the first gathering of the Camarilla founders in 1394, she was among a group that attacked a small castle in western Spain. During the battle, she took the opportunity to diablerize an influential Ventru called Hardestat the Elder, who, was, uh, who had been very, very badly injured during the fight. Such an event is regarded by kindred scholars as the beginning of the turmoil that allowed the Sabbat to gain permanent foothold of power in kindred politics. Now, Tyler was very confused to find out that Hardestat, after she had diablerized him, had attended the Convention of Thorns. Now, I've always been confused on whether the fact that people are actually supposed to know that, that Hardestat the Elder is not Hardestat the Younger. They are actually two different individuals. Um, some actually people uh, some actually think that he might be the missing child of Hardestat, Jürgen von Vergen, fun name to say, uh, but there there's no proof on that either way. He just happened to disappear around the same time that Hardestat was out there. But in in game terms, from what I understand, no one is actually supposed to know, which means Patricia Tyler is out there with that in important information that only the Camarilla founders should have because he was saving face not allowing the Anarchs to believe that they had that win in the long run after all so to short answer the question because I could actually go on on the Camarilla lore for a while but to answer Steve's question straight out yes the Anarch Free States in California were there, and yes, there were Gangrel and there were Bruja involved. But the fact that the entire clan, or, or I should say the majority of the clan, of Gangrel and Bruja, those did not specifically exist in the Anarchs, but they were heavy hitters. Because the Gangrel always want to be free. Because the Bruja never want to be under anyone's boot. And the fact that 2012 just marked a strong point for Clan Bruja and brought in Clan Gangrel and even the ministry after they were rejected their application to join during the Paris treaties to join the Camarilla. We have some interesting things to think about as this time passes because the promise of 1528 is also something to take into consideration. The promise of 1528 was the Camarilla officially saying that we will leave Clan Giovanni alone to do what they want to do. Let them commit a mass uh, a mass slaughter of their founding clan, the Cappadocians. In V5 lore, in, in the 5th edition lore, it says that that treaty was only supposed to be in effect for 500 years. And we are coming very, very clo closely. We're six years away from the Treaty of 1522 to be up. Where are the Hikata going to stand now? Are they going to join the Camarilla? Are they going to join the Anarchs? Because, or are the Camarilla just going to decide that it's time to, f to wholesale slaughter them? 
because we have a bunch of ancillae and neonates who are in charge of the one of the largest organizations on the planet for vampires right now. And they have been known to do dumb things, such as make it so that the Anarchs are no longer part of the Camarilla. Now, I understand why they did that out of character, because they were trying to give Camarilla or Anarchs something to fight against, that each other, since the Sabbat were taken out of the game for the most part. But since they've brought the Sabbat back in as antagonists, um into V5, there's no telling what they plan on doing. With the Sabbat back, the Anarchs might decide that it's time to just stop the fighting. That it might be a good idea to team back up with the Camarilla and, and protect themselves against the Sabbat. Who knows? Considering that they are the NPC antagonists, which I really do hope that eventually they, um, the guys over at... Um, World of Darkness do decide to to make a playable canon book for Sabat, um, but that's not where we are right now. So I I hope that answers your questions. Um, I'm trying not to be too overly uh, detailed on this one because it is a lot of it's a lot of information, and I don't want this video being too long. Um, but the the base questions that you asked about how the Bruja weren't said to have joined, but the Anarchs were around in the 40s, and, and still, yeah, that's true. But the idea, just plain and simple, is that they were not fully Bruja. They were not fully Gangrel. The 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 Anarchs have members of all clans in them, and even since the events that happened in Vienna, now the Anarchs are starting to get Tremere. You know, more often than they already had, because where the Tremere existed in the Anarchs, but it was like, you'd never find one. The rumors, if anything. Now, the Absismus Tremere are... It's a thing. It's a, it's a, it's a formal house that can grow. It can... It can exist outside of the house, Tremere. So, anyway, if that if that doesn't answer your questions, please ask more, and I will try to make sure that I explain it better next time. Uh, maybe we can go over a full timeline of the Anarch Revolt, just step by step, and show you guys where all the inconsistencies are. Because we're talking about an event that was supposed to have been started due to the Inquisition when the elders went oh god the church is sending hunters out let's give them the locations of our children and then the children went oh god we don't want to be cannon fodder and fought back and it erupted into a massive class debate on whether or not if you were younger it meant you weren't worth anything these are things that have mirrored human history the peasant revolt was a real thing and some of the big names that they mentioned in Vampire the Masquerade in, in the Anarch Revolts were, were real people. Obviously not the Kindred, but you know what I mean. So, thank you for joining me, and I will speak to you next time. Ho again, hopefully this was helpful. Um, if not, we can try again next time. <laughs> uh, thank, you for thank you for joining me. Good evening.